Over here, we have a picture of Jesus and his armies charging off to Armageddon to destroy all those non-Jehovah's Witnesses like us. And yet, there seems to be a curious cloud formation. If we take a closer look, we've got kind of the... Whoops, went too far there. Uh, we've got the A for Anarchy symbol. I don't know if you see that in there, but that's, I've seen that on walls, painted, spray-painted on walls and things like that. It's kind of on a sideways tilt. Uh, again, why is that particular formation in the clouds as Jesus and the armies are riding off to Armageddon? There were several pictures of Jesus also that, that seemed to show his hands in a strange position. This picture from the Greatest Man book uh, shows him blessing children, but there's something odd about his hand. I can't naturally hold my hand in that position. I have to force it that way. Maybe some of you are more flexible than me, but I can't imagine why they would draw Jesus' hand in that sort of position. Here's another example. This is from the Watchtower of 1988. Same position. Now, Derek Barefoot argued that this particular position of the hand is a variation of the horned hand. You've probably seen the one that looks like this with the kids at the concerts, right? That's a horned hand. People don't like that because it's supposed to be a demon sign. Well, according to Barefoot, this is a different sign, a different version of the same thing. I see people out there in the audience. Everybody's trying it. <laughs> Can I do that? <laughs> I imagine some people are more flexible than others, but it seems kind of an odd position to draw his hand in. Again, there are a lot more examples that we could examine. Uh, we're getting a little bit short on time, and as I, as I mentioned earlier, it's a very controversial subject. Not everybody agrees uh, that the images are there. Not everybody thinks that they mean anything or that they're relevant or that they were inserted on purpose. I kind of gave you a little quick overview of examples to try to get you to make up your own mind on it. My thought is that it, it looks to me like there's something there that was deliberately inserted. That's my thought. Now, why? By whom? I don't know. What really disturbed me about these pictures, though, wasn't the fact that they were there. You know the rumor that was going around the Watchtower at the time, around the organization at the time, was that there had been an apostate or a Satanist or something like that in the Bethel Art Department, and that they had found him and disfellowshipped him, and he was the one that was inserting all these pictures. You, you, many of you probably heard that. Uh, and what bothered me was that they published this article on spreading rumors. They, the article denied that any images existed, and then they started to disfellowship anybody who was persistent in saying that they saw the images or told other people about them or tried to make a case for them. It really shook me up that they were willing to take such extreme measures over this issue, and it, it made me believe that they had something to cover up, and even more to the point that God's organization was willing to lie about it in order to cover it up. That was a big, big step toward the door for me. Even though the images themselves I don't think are all that significant in the grand scheme of things, just knowing what their attitude toward it was really shook me up and really was a big, uh, a big step away. Speaking of uh, rumors going around the congregations, anybody remember these guys? Back when the Smurfs were big on TV, there were rumors running rampant in the organization about their supposed demonic connections. Uh, allegedly, there were satanic messages in the cartoons, and even worse, Smurf toys were rumored to come alive and do unusual things like uh, biting and injuring children in some cases. There was one story I had heard about a rather messy child whose parents put uh, Smurf wallpaper in his room, and the kid's room was always messy, but all of a sudden, every morning, the room was nice and tidy, and the parents couldn't figure out what was going on. So one night, they decided to stay up and watch, and what they found was that the Smurfs were coming down off the wallpaper and cleaning up the room at night. <laughs> I can't figure out why these little demons wanted to do such a good deed for the kid. That's the, that's the part that really sticks with me. But the classic story about the Smurfs that I, probably a lot of you heard if you were in the organization then had to be the one about the little girl who had the Smurf doll, brought it to the assembly hall, and right in the middle of the meeting, the Smurf got up and made a nasty, vulgar remark and walked out of the meeting under his own power. And we're all laughing. And these stories seem funny to us. And yet Smurf toys were being thrown out by Jehovah's Witness kids by the droves. Uh, and it's, it, it serves to illustrate the fear that the average Jehovah's Witness lives under when it comes to the demonic. What a large part the occult plays in their lives. Well, if we look at the Watchtower's record, we find pagan symbols, astrology, phrenology, pyramidology, necromancy, false prophecy, consulting of spirits, subliminal images. The question I got to ask, can this organization possibly, possibly be of God? This organization has touched the unclean thing. And remember, most Jehovah's Witnesses don't know anything about this. They'd be shocked 
to find out about it. Some might even be so shocked that their faith in the organization would be shaken, and they might come out. But remember, if you try to present this to them, that the Watchtower teaches them that any organization, any uh, information that opposes the organization is automatically a lie by default. They are correct about certain things, though. God does forbid his people to become involved in occult practices. They would quote Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 13 to you, where it says, Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritist or who consults the dead. Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord, and because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive out those nations before you. You must be blameless before the Lord your God. Jehovah's Witnesses today would agree with this. However, the history of their organization shows that they have not been faithful to God in this area. We are assured that Christians, real Christians, do not need to fear the demonic. 1 John 4, 4 says, You dear children are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Christ Jesus is in me and he's greater than the one that's in the world. Satan may be allowed to test and tempt us, but there's a problem for Jehovah's Witnesses, and that's that they're not followers of the real Jesus Christ. They're followers of an organization. They're followers of men. They do not have Christ in them, and therefore their fear is justified. As every one of us once was, they're lost sinners in need of a Savior. And I should probably mention at this point, it's not just Jehovah's Witnesses who need a Savior. Every one of us does. I hope that everyone here, everyone in this room, has received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and that you have Christ Jesus in you. I hope that no one here fails the test. 2 Corinthians 13.5 says, Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test? I hope you don't. But if you do... You need to know that Jesus is very near. He died for your sins, and he wants to give you eternal life as a free gift if only you will accept the gift. You can come to know him right here, right now. You can walk out of this room tonight and go down to the dinner hall knowing that Christ is in you and that you pass the test. We are assured in the Bible that to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. I am not going to ask uh, for you to close your eyes or a show of hands or anybody to come to the front of the auditorium here. I just want you to think in your heart, sincerely evaluate your situation with the Lord and invite him into your life if you haven't already done that. And if you don't feel like you know how to do that, please talk to someone. Talk to me, talk to Joan, talk to anybody. Who, in all these ministries here, all these Christians in this room, there are plenty of people here who know Jesus as their personal Savior, as their Lord, and we would love the opportunity to introduce you to him. Let's just close with a word of prayer. Once again, Lord, we thank you for this uh, hour and for this uh, convention and, and for all the wonderful privileges you give us as your people, for everything that, we, that, that you do and the, and the glory that you bring yourself through uh, our works and, and through the works of those who love you and serve you throughout the world. We pray that everyone here passes the test and that the, the Holy Spirit can use some of this information that's been presented to open, closed minds of Jehovah's Witnesses and, and that uh, Jesus' word may penetrate the hearts of those who have been deceived. We pray for your blessing in all that we do and we pray for your blessing on the remainder of this con convention, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Thank you. <laughs>